is a rainbow and it took the upper fly, which is an ugly purple, purple nymph with a pink bead at the head. More of a rain, more of what you'd think of as a rainbow fly instead of the mop fly. Yep, cute little rainbow. Looks like it could be a wild fish too. It has nice colors on it, clean fins. We all agonize over fly choice, but take a lesson from George. He keeps his fly selection simple, as instead of trying to match the hatch with a specific fly, in Euro nymphing, you're just trying to get something that looks tasty in front of a trout. It's much more about getting the fly down to the fish with depth control than it is about using the perfect fly pattern. But George, um, talk a little bit about the flies used. Now, you can theoretically use any heavily weighted fly for this, right? They don't have to be tied on jig hooks. You Correct. can use a standard B-dead prints or whatever. Correct. This kind of fishing. Yeah. But a lot of people use um, specialized flies. Actually, they're not specialized. They're more generic patterns, right? They're kind Correct. of almost nymph attractors. Exactly. Um, how do you rationalize what, what fly to pick? Basically, what I'm looking at is I fish about a dozen styles of flies, no matter where I go. Mm -hmm. um, I just have some varieties of pheasant tails, hare's ears, uh, to cover most of my mayfly imitations. Mm -hmm. I have some soft tackle patterns to imitate some caddis, along with some case caddis. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I have worms and what they refer to as junk flies for dirty water conditions or any time where fish are actually feeding on uh, floating worms. Right. For the most part, I'm looking at a fly more from a depth standpoint. Okay. I weight my flies according to three distinct weight classes. Okay. Most of my flies in the heavier section here are tied with a 532nd bead. Mm -hmm. Tungsten, this next one is tied with a 764, one size smaller, and the next box is tied with a 332nd. Okay. So right there, I have three ways of adjusting my depth. Most of the time, I put the heavier fly on the point. Putting the heavier fly on the point keeps a, the entire rig tight, from the rod tip to the nymph. Also, when you fish a heavier fly in the point, the lighter weight fly in the drop, on the dropper, you're fishing two distinct levels in the presentation. So keeps it tight, and you fish two levels. George, we talked um, a bit about weight in flies, and um, are there other considerations regarding the profile of the fly for, for getting it down? Absolutely, what we're trying to go for, for the most part, is just trying to create as thin and as dense of a body as possible that's just going to quickly penetrate through the water column mm -hmm. to achieve depth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you obviously want the fuzzy flies floating more in the water column, mm -hmm for emergers, but anytime you're looking to achieve a, a deep drift uh, as close to the bottom, try to strive for thin and dense bodies. Okay, what would you consider a, a thin and dense fly? This is a style of fly called the Pertigum. Uh -huh. It's just a hard body fly. It can be, the body can be constructed of thread or a floss mm -hmm. that's coated with a UV uh -huh. resin, yep. hit with a light, but just something that's, again, just very thin in diameter. This is just a V-rib nymph. It's a hard body nymph, but yeah. you can see the dubbed collar. Yeah. And that's going to sink at a much slower rate than the Pertigo. Okay. Okay. Great. Good to know. Mm -hmm.